Welcome back everyone. So, what are we doing today? It's all about skies. And, I mean, full disclosure, a lot of the skies I end up taking, I, I do replace. Um, I do replace with other images and overlays just because skies to me are a big part, especially with like landscape photos, a big part of it. And it's one of the few things you just can't control on the day. And I don't see the point of like waiting for those perfect conditions. If I'm out there, I'm, I'm going to take the shots I want. And I know that with the capabilities of Lightroom and Photoshop, uh, I can always go back and edit to what I want. So I will replace my skies quite a lot, but then I'll only ever do that if I know I can't get out of it what I want from the sky. When there's a lot of times where you might think, I've taken a shot of the sky, it's overblown, there's no details there, I'm going to try and swap that out. Well, hold that thought, let's see if we can save them with some sky fixes. So I've got a few photos here today and we're going to look at how we can fix the sky. I've got this one from Iceland here and then I've just got a couple of other random ones of Lake and from Whitby. And each of these have a slightly different thing going on. This one's got some more blue tones already in there. The Iceland one is very much a sunset type style so there's a lot of warmth going in there. And the other one is very overcast. So we have three different types of skies here, but the same fix works across them all. We just have to tweak it depending on the photo. Now, all of these photos, I haven't done any edits at all to yet. So they are just straight out of the camera there. Um, so let's have a look together. So let's have a look at this overcast one first then. It's not the greatest photo. It was literally just one I snapped, I think, off the side of a boat. Um, but it's a great example for looking at what's going on with the skies here. So you can see we already do have a little bit of detail going on. And if I make global edits over here, so for example, if I pull my highlights all the way down, this is going to work for the entire image. Now, I would normally go through and do some full global edits, but I want to work just with the sky. So to edit only the sky, we're going to have to make a mask. And if you've never used masking before, please do check out my other video on masks and the power of them because it will change your life with Lightroom. Click over here then onto my masks. And in the past, I would have had to have sort of selected uh, a brush here uh, and then like painted over all of the sky. And, and it just takes a lot of time to make it more difficult. But now we have this cool thing called select sky. Click that wait a couple of minutes, seconds, however fast your computer is, and boom, Lightroom will select the sky for you and create a mask. And it does a pretty good job of it as well. Uh, in the past, this would have taken a lot of time and would have really just annoyed me. But now I have this ability to just fully select my sky. But let's say you wanted to change slightly. So it's not always perfect. If we come in here, we can see we have bits of the mountain still used over. So if we go over to the mask and click on it and then click our plus or minus, select a brush, then we can brush over that section and you'll see it goes back. It removes part of the mask. So I can take just a little bit of time to go over this with the minus one on the brush there and just take any of those bits that I don't want necessarily to affect. Now, it is good sometimes for the effect to actually bleed over into the mountains or vice versa for the mountainside bleed into the sky a bit, and that is so that what you're doing up there doesn't look too unnatural and too segregated to the rest of the image. Now, I haven't done any edits on that, so that may happen with this, um, but as you go through, you can always come back and edit this mask as you go there. So let's say I've done my mask edit now then, and I'm happy with that. Let's see how we can fix our overcast sky. The most important ones then you can use to fix an overcast sky is your exposure, your highlights, and your dehaze. Let's check out what each of those is doing. If I pull my exposure down, this helps to create that dramatic type sky. So you can see everything goes a little bit more darker and stormier there. And you immediately see what I mean about segregating the sky from the backgrounds. See how now it's standing out from the mountains. And there's a little bit of a brush area there I could afford to go back on with my brush. And maybe this time add 
some more back in and I might actually add it into the mountain on the back there as well just so my sky blends in but these are things you can decide as you're going along you don't have to have the mask perfect to begin with let's head back then so I've got my exposure there that can bring back a little bit more detail and get that stormy sort of feel especially if your sky was very overexposed like this this automatically will bring them back another reason why we should try to always shoot in raw let's pull that off then and have a look at what the highlights are going to do as well. So if I pull my highlights down, same thing, introducing a bit of detail, but it's not as aggressive as the exposure. So if we combine the two together, I pull my highlights down and my exposure down, then I'm going to get a lot of those details back in the cloud, particularly you can see all the way down here. These clouds are starting to stand out now against the sky. The other one I like to use a lot then is the dehaze. The dehaze. If I pull that up, you can see it's also darkened in certain areas. If I go down, you get that more faded. So by pulling the dehaze up alongside the highlights and the exposure, you gotta find a careful balance between them all. You can't just max out every one of them. Let's see what that looks like. Terrible. So you got to find that careful balance between all of them. The highlights is probably the one I'll pull down the most and but that will depend on my overall edit because I tend to suck out a lot of the highlights globally. Find the right exposure and then, yeah, find the right dehaze as well. If we go for like this stormy kind of feeling, you might notice it started to actually bring back some blues into the sky up here that we might not want. So in that case, then I'm going to pull down my saturation as well just to keep that real grey cloud sort of feel. Let's check out between the two. So now you can see, yes, the skies are darkened down, but we've got a bit more detail going on in there as well. And we've struck that balance between them. So we've taken an overcast sky and actually made it a little bit more dramatic. Adding to the combination of the skies in here, you can also play around with your blacks on this and your clarity too. If I pump up my clarity on my sky, that again is just going to bring up some definition on the lines than if I went the other way. So I might add a bit of clarity in there. If I pull my blacks down, again, I'm just getting that stormier sort of feeling. And there we go. Does stand out against the rest of the image because I've not done any edits. So this kind of sky fix is something that I will do after I've done a global edit. And uh, that's because I'll try and get as much out of the sky as possible with the initial edit and then I'll add this mask over the top. Let's try this on a different photo though. So in the case of the Iceland one here then, if we go quickly down to this, I'm gonna do a global edit first. So I'm gonna look at what happens if I pull down some highlights, raise some shadows a bit more so I can really see what's going on with the beach. Raise my blacks a bit again so I can see just the beach down here. Uh, I'm just trying to create a nice sort of flat image with this tad bit of clarity in there and I'm going to leave the dehaze in the moment um, I do like the yellows I think this could go either way depending on the mask I think I'm going to suck it out for the moment just so I can show you how we would add a bit more in there um, and then let's just do a generic curve down on this Okay, so let's say we've done a global edit here like this. Now let's add in on top of that our sky mix. Go to my masks, I'm gonna select my sky, wait for Lightroom to do its thing, and boom. Little bit of overbleed to the sides there, so I'm just gonna get my brush again, and I'm just gonna brush that a bit over the sides. There are some rocks over there, so I'd probably try and be a bit more detailed with that. There we go. And I find if you get a bigger brush and just go for the outskirts of the brush, that helps to feather it across in place there. Okay. O is a great shortcut on your keyboard to get rid of that red if you want it to. Okay, so let's do the same things going on here then. I'm going to pull down my highlights first. And I don't actually like what this is doing here because it's, it's taking away too much of the lightness from the top. So I'm going to leave that alone. Let's go for the dehaze slider instead. 
there we go that's nicer so getting that kind of dramatic feel from the middle of the sky here and pulling in some more of that um, and let's just try the exposure slightly and I'm going to raise the clarity slightly as well so in this one the highlights didn't work they just it, they didn't look nice I wanted some more lightness up here, but this is a perfect time to say that we can stack masks upon masks to fix our skies. So that's my first mask. I like what's going on here is the light source, but it's not generating too much light. So I'm going to create another mask using my radial gradient. gradient. And I'm going to put that over my light source there. And I'm going to bring up my exposure this time. ever so slightly and I'm just going to make that a bit wider as well so I get that feeling like it's coming across the sky there and again this time I could do reverse I could look to bring in more highlights for this part because I want that glow effect on the sun to happen here And again, if I go the opposite way of my clarity this time, I'm going to get a bit more of that glow effect again. But it doesn't always look as nice. Uh, and then the last thing I might do is I might add a bit of a temperature bump into it. Just because it's nice and warm there and I want to really accent the already yellows that are going on within it. There we go. So now... I've got my sky fix, the base layer of the sky fix on top of the global, and I'm accenting out the sun that's going in. I'm trying to draw attention to my eye here. This is the main bit of the composition. So if I turn my masks off, and then I turn them back on, we get that nice fix to it. A final one I could add in then, I could add a linear gradient, maybe just to the top. Um, and I'm going to target this sort of already blue area. So I'm going to tilt it towards this side a little bit more. Uh, and all I'm going to do here is bring in a little bit more coolness on the temperature. Just to hit those blues at the top. So now I've got the blues working into the yellows and oranges. So your sky fixes, you've got to work with what's already there. If it's an overcast, you're looking to bring the dramatic in. If you've got the sunrise... How can you bring your eye into where the light source is? And again, I'll use one of my sliders, where it's highlights, blacks, clarity, to haze. And I'm going to bring the exposure down slightly here, again, just so I'm darkening the top bit of the sky and pulling my eyes down to the middle. And there we go, if I toggle on and off. We've got a much more bolder looking sky going on here, more details popping out and we've made that the center of attention. So once I've done that, I'll probably go back through and I'll spend some more time doing some more masks down the bottom here as well. Uh, and I'll work on the uh, actual global fix of it just to control little contrasting bits. But that fits a lot nicer in with what's going on. One last photo then. So let's see what this looks like on a nice sunny day. Here we've got one over in Whitby. So if I do a quick global edit similar kind of things i'm not going to do curves i'm just going to bump up some contrast on this instead and i do a select of my sky i've time here to go over and fix it so hopefully lightroom does a fairly all right job uh, and again i'm going to go over and do my usual things so i'm going to check out highlights first that pulls in quite a nice amount. I don't really want to mess around with the exposure here too much because it's quite a nice bright image. So I'm not necessarily going for a darker sky feel, just more details. So I'm going to leave the exposure alone. But I'm going to bring some of that dehaze in just to separate out the clouds from the sky a little bit more. Uh, and then I can look at the temperature side of it and I could choose to either play around with my saturation or I can just bring in a bit more of a cooler feeling into the sky there just to bring out those blues ever so slightly more. The nature of these blues I can then go down and change in the sliders at the bottom so it's quite, it's got that baby blue kind of feel so I can look to come down here and just change the hue 
of my blues ever so slightly or I can come down to the calibration as well and look to change what my blues are doing a little bit more down there. Um, again I could come in with a separate one and if I want to just pull my eyes in a little bit more I might just want to darken the top part of the sky like that just so I've got these clouds up here a little bit darker than the ones down there. So where's this sky thing? It's it's a great kind of fix to put in. It It's not the solution. You still need to use your traditional mask as well. And remember, the more you start layering on top of stuff here, the better the results that you can get. So there's three kind of examples of how you might fix your skies and use masks. Don't be put off by a cloudy day. Go out there, take the photos you planned, and then use it as a challenge to see what you can fix afterwards. If you like what you see here, please do subscribe. I'll have many more tutorials, things coming out, and lots of stuff on business for creative skills as well. How can you start to sell your photography and art and not just leave them as photos sat there on your computer?